Hi. What's happening? Everyone can't see it. Oh, they can't see it. Oh, can we make it more at the top? If, if, if you make it, so the position is up here, I, I, I can talk a little more. So, uh, I, as a trainer, I have uh, developed my ability to, to talk to people over the last 30 years. And uh, slowly I've developed some abilities. And uh, from, from 2009, I've been working with a player called Boris Gelfand, uh, who since won the World Cup the candidates and almost won the World Championship, and a player from 2012. And I still work with him, but mainly I work with a player called Samuel Shankman from America at the moment. If you make it a bit bigger, and then maybe drag it so, exactly so that uh, it's a little bit out of the picture, but the board is not. It's a little bit too big, but if you could put it up in this corner here, over okay. here. Okay, so my main student is Sam Chamberlain. <laughs> there, yeah, 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 yeah. How are you doing down the back? Do you want to see the position? If you can see it down the back, please raise your hand. If you can hear me in the back, raise your hand. They can't even hear me. If they can't hear me, that's okay. <laughs> then they don't need the position. It doesn't make sense anyway. Okay, so my, my student Sam here is a uh, slightly worse position with uh, White. And uh, he made a little mistake on his last move. And his opponent had a chance. He didn't know that chance, he didn't see it, and the game went on and was a draw. At this point here, Black had a chance. And uh, and uh, I think Saga wants to say something about moves and when I suggest things and so on. Ah, okay. no, uh, this is a question posed to you in this position. Black to play, yeah? Black to play. Black to play. Uh, and uh, uh, the one who would give an answer which Jakob would think is correct would get uh, a three months chess based account, premium uh, account. So try your best, yeah? Yes, we say thank you to Chess Base India for sponsoring uh, <coughs> So suddenly lots of that. Yeah, you want to point that? <laughs> yeah, they're raising hands. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Saga, the mic. So you can choose some. You can choose some. Bishop H3. Good suggestion, but not best. It's, a, it's not a bad move at all. That's just, it just so happens there's a better move here. So if, if Saga, here's a rule, if people start walking around, they don't get the microphone. They have to sit in their seat, yeah? No, if you don't sit in their seat, you don't get a chance. We're going to have, have, have lots of trials. Priority to C3. Okay, bishop takes C3. Rook E3. Okay, so you knight takes, bishop takes and rook in. Let's say I move my bishop. Rook into F3. I think we have a winner, Saga. <laughs> so, yes, they're, they're very, very strong here. Uh, this young kid. So uh, yeah, what, what happened earlier today was I was giving a training to, to the Grandmasters at the Chess Oracle Academy and uh, at some point I heard uh, while the Grandmasters were thinking about the exercise I heard some noise from another room and uh, I'm a very curious guy, so I went in to see what was happening in this room. And there were five young boys playing chess. And one of, one of the other was working after that. And they, they, they were a little uh, unsure what to do actually, because the five is not the right number to play chess. So I played a quick demo, and I almost won all the games. I made one draw in the sideways position. Okay, before, before I talk more about the theoretical thing, I think we want another... Yes.
for the position. I need this time wide to play. By the way, I should say I am trying, I'm not sure I'm going to succeed, but I'm trying to keep the player to play at the bottom. So before you saw the board was with black down, now it's with white starting in this side. So I'm trying to do that. If I fail, then Saga will probably tell me. He doesn't know the position, so I'm, I'm, I'm having this a tour of, uh, of Asia, 14 cities, 13, 14 cities, and Saka and Amruta is following me to 13 of them, and uh, I feel I can't give the same lecture twice, because they're listening to it every night and every day in the training. So I have to prepare experts for every, uh, every session to, uh, to keep them entertained. But here's white to play. Already there must be a lot of ideas here. What's a good move? What's a good move? What's a good move? Any suggestions? We have a suggestion here in front. We have one in the back. Where you go? You go to the back. That's wrong. I'm wrong. I'm going to take the one in the front. Okay, I'm going to give, give this young man a chance. B7. B7. B7 is suggested. That's a very logical move. That, that's actually what uh, White played, Robin van Kampen, Dutch uh, Grandmaster against Sergei Tsiryakov, another Dutch Grandmaster, but uh, as the name suggests, not Dutch born. I wasn't born in Scotland, so I think that's okay. So he played B7, and Black had to play his rook over and uh, block the pawn, and White had to play his rook behind the pawn. And it looks very promising for White, but he's a mess. You probably already guessed. No. It's not the best move. Not the best move. You'll have to pay for it just in Japan. Sorry. Okay. Get attention later. We have, we have a suggestion. No, next one. Next one down. Yeah. No, next one down. First. Rook C7. Rook C7 is a very clever move, but it's not right. It's a good idea. I will explain the position in a moment, but first we'll have some more guesses. Yeah, okay, let's take this one here. Yeah. Rook B5 is almost the same as we had with B7, Rook B8, Rook B5, it's very similar. They're all very natural moves. This is what a top grandmaster was thinking. This is not stupid, yeah? Just, just really difficult. Sometimes there are moves we don't automatically see, which are better. So now we have more and more hands. You may choose someone from the back this time, yeah? yeah. Nobody shout out no but I give a microphone in my classroom, please, sir. Okay? Because, first of all, other people might want to find it. Secondly, we have an order there. King B2. King B2 is uh, another suggestion, yeah. It's not bad move at all, but it's not best. And this is a little bit sneaky because end games are very difficult. So okay, let's find someone. Rook C6. Rook C6, there you go. Well done. Okay, but while he brings it up, I, I will, uh, as they take a photo, I'll just show the variation from before. We, we, we talked about it on the screen, but I also want to show it, and then I'll show them why Rook C6 is the best move. So this variation here, from before, black play knight before the game was made by draw. It's not so interesting. Play knight takes, bishop takes, here. We have attack on the two white bishops, and if the bishop moves away, let's say b2, then the rook would take the bishop, and if the queen takes back, And we will put the bishop in here. And the king is here, the queen is here, bishop is protected, a very lethal pin. Yeah? These small options, they happen in games constantly. And sometimes they're a little more complicated. You have to understand things. But uh, 
the thing is, I actually, uh, I was coaching Robin for a little bit, a five day session, and he, he showed me some of his games and his problems. And his problem, he said, was not that he didn't understand what was happening in the position, because Robin has an immense understanding of chess, but that he simply didn't consider rook c6 at all. So the game continued, c7, rook b8, rook b5, and the king comes in here, and, and, and white is about to lose his extra pawn, and there's a variation like this, and black is just in time to make a draw. The eighth pawn is not enough to win the game. I know for some reason this is slightly complicated, but if you take the general thing from it here, in this position here, you can see that after white played this, black was able to get his king into the game. Yeah? And Robin knew that he should not allow black to get his king in. But he didn't, hadn't developed the technique of looking for moves. So, what he told me was that with the help of uh, analysis after the game, he found out that the right move was rook c6. And now black cannot easily get his king into the game. He will have to go around the back line and white will be able to get his king in. The black king is simply further away. For example, if black plays the king to f8 immediately, then b7 is good. Because after rook b8, we don't have to play the rook to b6, we can play the rook to c8. Yeah? Okay. So, after rook c6, he analyzed the variation. And, and I know for some of you, this might go a little bit over your head and go a little bit fast and so on. So, but if you take the general principle, which was white knew that he had to control the black king, but he didn't look for a way to do it. Then you can make it follow. There are many variations here, so. Now white got his king into the game and black didn't. And here, white is ready to take his roof and put it in front of his pawn. So it's already time to take it. And this position here wins. We can make a few more moves to show you. I'm saying, and then this just seems very difficult at the same time, then I'm really, really pleased. Because I think that it's okay to have very, very complicated questions, but to have an answer that you can work with, it has to be quite simple. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. So, one of the questions I often have heard in my life from many, many people, and maybe you, even you. So here I'll ask you, have you ever thought, what was I thinking? Without coming up with an answer. Anyone ever thought, what was I thinking at a game of chess when you didn't see the opponent's move? No one? Is it just me? Oh, there's someone there, and you and me alone, sir. Thank you, and you, yes. 
always brave to put up your hand and admit to making mistakes. But you know what? Other people don't think less of you. They actually think more of you. But sometimes maybe you shouldn't tell them what the mistake was, yeah? Because then they'll think less of you. But now you can admit to... No, it's fine. I'm, I'm just talking, Sarah. I'm, tr I'm trying to present these ideas. So, have you ever thought what I was thinking without coming up with an answer? Oh, we had a few people who agree. Yes? So, what is the answer? Uh, if you don't have any plans, uh, like breakthrough, like uh, in certain positions, if you don't have any ideas, that time uh, you don't get any results. So, if you don't have any ideas, why don't you have any ideas? In some positions, uh, uh, because of some structures, you don't find ideas. So so like some some positions can be difficult. That's essentially what you're saying, yeah? Yeah, some middle game position can be very difficult. But then, then you don't ask yourself afterwards, was what I, what was I thinking? No, what was I thinking was what you missed, what you did wrong. You know, when you when you put the the, the vegetables into the tip and all the all the peels into the the pan, then you you did something really silly, yeah. And we all done stuff like that. Maybe not especially that, but in your case, but in my case, I've done that. And I'm like, what was I thinking? And the answer is almost always the same. Um, which I hope is on the next page. It should be on the next page. It's not. I have an answer for you. You were not thinking. We do a lot of things without thinking. And sometimes that's a problem. So, one of, one of my key little tricks in life here, and this goes for chess players and non-chess players, always find real answers to rhetorical questions. Why does this always happen to me? I have an answer for you. Whatever, you, whatever it is that always happens to you, you keep making the same mistake. For example, <coughs> You're not answering your rhetorical <coughs> questions. The thing of not thinking, yeah? So, this should be done to my next thing here. Why did you miss the tactic? I think this is a tricky one for a question, but you try. No, no, you know, you, you've been to this lecture before. There's different chairs, yeah? But let's try, yeah, anyone, why did you miss the tactic? So over there. Put your hand up, sir, please. Why did the boy miss the tactic? Let's say that. Not you, sir. You wouldn't miss it. But why did the boy miss the tactic? Because I didn't calculate the variations and the intermediate rows. And uh, that's sort of so far away. I'm not going to give you a price for it. But if it was. Also close enough that people shouldn't ignore what he's saying is entirely wrong. Sorry. So we have a few more uh, hands in the back. While Saga finds the hand in the back, I'm going to give it to a gentleman. Saga, we'll try this one first. Ah, okay. Because uh, we think we already found the answer. First, we think we already found the answer. Mm, we were very close. No. No, I'm going to give it to not having concentration. <laughs> I couldn't hear it. Not having concentration. Not having concentration. That's very, 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 very close. Why did you miss the tactic? I want a very. It's, it's like one of these answers where I want something very simple. Very simple. It has to be really simple. It's similar to why did this always happen to me? It's not like I find someone. No? Okay, I'm going to ask this young man here. Not listening, not listening to the class. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I didn't understand the accent, but I think the audience are happy with us giving a prize for, the, for this. Yeah? <laughs> We're all here for our entertainment. Yeah, not, come on, you get it. Not listening in the class. <laughs> So I, I have a problem. Not only is Indian accents not natural to me, 
Uh, I did it my way. Not only are the Indian accents not, not natural to me, I have a new one every day, I have to adjust to. So, so the, I didn't really understand it, but everyone else did. He says not listening in the class. Not listening in the class. Wow, that's very close. <laughs> It's sort, of, sort, of, sort of the same thing. Well, look, I'm, I'm going to move on here. Okay, you already know this one? No, not really. So, it's the same as this one here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the tactic, why did you miss your opponent's opportunity? You did not go for it. Yeah? It, it's really that simple. This, this is why we make most mistakes in chess. It's because we don't look for things. So, let's do a chess position. See which one do we do? This one here. Black to play here. Black to play. I think everyone should have a chance to, to, uh, to think a little bit. And then after that, I'll be a little more theoretical and talk for a little bit. So this is your chance to think before you have to be quiet. Black to play, yeah? Black to play. So we'll, we'll take about a, a minute, here at least. It's from a, a, a rapid game between Hare Krishna and Nipom Yeah? Anyone heard about any of these two gentlemen? Of course you yeah. have. So we, we're looking for the best move for black. Best move for black. This is something we, we in, in very technical chess called prophylaxis, actually. Anticipating the opponent's ideas. Queen F3. So Queen F3 is a very interesting move. It's the move of a former European champion, Ian de in this game. But sadly, it's not the best. It's not the right book. No, no, no standing up and chatting on those, yeah? Take your hand. No chatting on yeah? Okay, okay, so after Queen F3 saga, do we have space for like a, an extra question here? Yeah, maybe the next question is what is the problem and also the right thing? Well, I think we can separate it into two, yeah? Okay. So here we have, why is this move wrong? As in, why, what, what does it miss? What does it miss? Okay, let's, uh, let's take the guy, the gentleman closest to you here. Yeah, yeah. He oh, you already did. Yeah. Oh, you had your chance. Sorry. There we go. Queen takes f 7 Queen takes F7. That's quite a move, isn't it? So Queen takes F7. Now, King takes. Why do watch the checkmate by pinning the queen? And if queen takes, I'll show the whole variation. Yeah, you. No shouting at most, please. I got the microphone. <laughs> this is a young gentleman I pinned for a bit earlier today. I, I have to say, I, I was towards the end. At first, I had a really nice position. But then I was really careless because I was deeply engaged in my four other games. And then I, I made a few mistakes, lost control, and in the end I was on the defense, sir, but I made the draw. Do you want to take the photo? Yeah. yeah. Should I be a part of it? Yeah, yeah do you um, I should give it. Uh, Aditya has found the right move. We did to F7. Great. 
So okay, Queen takes f7 with the right move. I'll just repeat where we were. Queen takes f7 check. No time for checkmate. If the king takes them here, that's one variation. And the other variation is queen takes rook b7. And here we get into a ball ending. And at the board you could spend a long time calculating it. But neither player really have different options at this point. So an inch in a queen ending and the game goes on. And with quick with, with play, white will make a draw. So that's disappointing because in the starting possession, black's doing really, really, really well. But queen f3 falls into a trap. And I should say, he played queen f3, and white didn't see queen takes f7, so he lost anyway. Poor hide. So, what else can black play? What else can black play? So, Saga, try this young man here. Queen e2, queen e2, yes. Excellent move. So, the key point here, I don't know how well, well it comes up on the screen, but the key point here is, with this pawn we have a very difficult square to defend on g2, and checkmate coming. And while, while the young man comes up here, I'm just going to show how queen e2 wins the game. So queen e2, Queen G5 check. What else? King H7. Queen H4 check. King to G6. Still main is very close, so must take the pawn. And Queen E3 check. If King F1, Queen D3. If King G2, Queen E4. We win the rook and then time the game. So let's do the quick photo. Okay, three Vikraman gets the right answer. Okay, so I'll move on a bit to be a little more talking about the theoretical from the point of from the point of psychology, what actually happens in the brain. I know, I know, I know it's very hard, but let's try and keep just the level of sound just a little bit down. Okay, so in psychology, they talk about system one and system two thinking. And uh, this is quite important for chess. And I already understood and used words in chess that explain system one and system two thinking. But when I came across it in psychology, I thought it was, was really amazing that they had, uh, they had discovered what we in chess already knew. That, that there are two kinds of thinking. So, let me just say what they say about System 1 and System 2. I'll read this out. This is System 1. System 1 thinking is fast, automatic, frequent, emotional, stereotypic, and subconscious. It handles all the things that we already know how to do. Saka, what is 2 plus 2? 4. See, you already knew this one, yeah? What is, uh, no, you, yeah, you, you already have a lifetime subscription, yeah? Maybe you can give one to your wife. Saga, what is 248 times 24? <laughs> Come on, you can do it. I ask him every night, and he doesn't know the answer. It's too lazy to find it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. How many times did I ask? Four times, five times? Yeah, yeah. So, the point is here, if we think Zach and I are walking along, and I'm saying, what is two times two? He says four. And then we're walking, walking, walking. We're talking, talking, talking. We're rather boring people, so when we talk, it just sounds like this. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we uh, I say what is 248 times 24? Anyone work that out yet, by the way? Do you have one here? 
Oh, no, 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 no. I, you look down, that's the phone. No, 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 no. You have to look it out in your head. No, no, no. You know, next time you organize a chess tournament, you know, and he goes to the toilet, you know, have someone go with him. You never know what he's doing out there. No, 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 no. I know all the tricks. You work it out in your head. Okay. You work it out in your head. So, so we can, uh, yeah, sure. you, you can you can be the judge if he's right, yeah? <laughs> if he's right, you can, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thailand, Thai food. Is right? No? No, so we take the gentleman with the glasses out by the window? Four nine one five two. No? No. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saga, Why are you No. Have you got the wrong answer? Uh, maybe, maybe he has the wrong answer. <laughs> Who has a move on the obvious? We can check ourselves. We really should have worked this out in the match, shouldn't we? So the first answer was actually right. The yes. mistake was over here. <laughs> so actually he, he was using pen and paper, so we should have criticized him. Well, well, it is no wonder that he got the right answer. He studies at IIT. Oh. So. <laughs> Let's give a hand to Can I just give you a second? So, so how did you work it out? I think I split 248 into 250 minus 2. And 250 is the easy number to work with. So 250 is 246,000. And uh, I did this to a distributed profit. Okay, so basically, uh, you didn't just see it, you had to work it out, yeah? And, and what, do you, were you talking with your friends while you were working out? No, I was telling him the answer. Afterwards? Not... I calculated it and then told him the answer. Yeah, yeah, but while you were calculating, working it out, you were just in a world of your own, yeah? Yeah, I was on my own. Yeah, just cut out everything else, you cut away everything else. This is what we call... Thank you. This is what we call system two thinking. So system two is... So, you have to slow down, yeah? It takes effort. It doesn't happen all the time. It's infrequent. It's logical. It's calculating. It gives it away after a budget. And it's conscious. You know exactly what you're doing, yeah? Exactly what we're doing. When we try to solve an unusual and complex problem, we use the brain in this way. We don't do it as much of the time, unless we force ourselves to do it. So, for example, in chess, how does this relate to chess? Because this is what we're talking about at all. It's good to know that our brain works this way. In chess, we have a different word for these two things. System one thinking, the thoughts that just flow through your mind all the time, when you choose which one to pay attention to, the moves you see on the board when it just happens, is what we call intuition. Intuition is not just a feeling of which way to go, but it's also variation to see for free. System two thinking, which our gentleman he has shown here with, with great excellence, is what we call concentration. Concentration means you remove everything that is unnecessary. Yeah? Concentration means you don't pay attention to your friends, you don't listen to the music. When we're walking around, and I'm asking you questions such as 248 times 24, we'll see if you remember the, the answer when we get to the next place. I don't think you will. Because, because then it'd be system one, it's just memory. Ah. See if you remember the dinner, yeah? So, we're walking along, and Saga, he stops off, and he says, oh, I have to work this one out. Everything else goes back, and he gets hit by a truck. That's just the way it is. It's a very sad story, actually. So in chess, concentration is when we 
close off this stream of moves that goes through our head all the time. So let's see. How do we do that? We do it the same way as if we're walking, talking, and have to work something out. We stop everything. We slow down. In order to find something, you need to look for it. You know, this is why did I mess my opponent's tactic? Why did I mess my own tactic? Because I did not look for it. This sounds very, very amazing. <laughs> basic. Basic. Basic is the word, but I don't know if what it means. I thought it was very simple. I do apologize, it's really that easy. But you know what the great thing about easy things are? They can be replicated. You can do it again, and again, and again. And you can improve in chess doing this again, and again, and again. In order to concentrate, you need to slow down and just look. This might sound very, very basic, as my friend Saka here says. But we were sitting with some of the greatest players in the country, which by implication means of the world today. And uh, with the exception of a very experienced Ramesh, I think a lot of them struggled to actually look for things they didn't automatically see. And they had to be told to do it, and then they would do it better. Okay, I'm, I'm talking a lot here, so we have some chairs. We should have some chairs. Okay. So, we'll take a slightly different example. I think we wanted to find it. 